Anybody who embarks on Rent to Rent, I think you realise it very early on, especially when you first start. It's a very lonely game, you know? People don't like you changing because they're in love with the current you. Mm. And they feel like they're losing you, and that's the person they love. And they, they took me in the office one morning, and I came in for work, and they said, you know, I've, um, you know, we've got to let you go. Unfortunately, we can't afford your role anymore, even though you put it all together from scratch. We can't afford to pay you. And I left that meeting feeling so deflated, and I decided to myself on that day I would never ever put my um, my future in someone else's hands again. I started that company with five pounds in my account, yeah. and it paid me nine hundred pounds a day in the end. Okay, Livo, thank you so much for coming to my house. You are number one video on Rise Up Success Stories. So straight into it, thank you for coming. How did you get started in property and why? Um, well, I think uh, I started probably about four months ago. Um, and it was off the back of um, a crash course that I attended. So I, I found some stuff on YouTube. Um, and I was in between jobs at the time, so I just finished um, running uh, a, a, an agency. So I used to run an agency, right? Um, okay. Which was, you know, uh, quite full. What on. sort of agency? It was like a modelling agency, right? So yeah, very very full on. Limited work. company or? Uh, yeah, limited. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, uh, you know, it was. Um, so how did that lead to property? Well, um, the work was very stressful. It was very stressful. Yeah. So I used to work, um, you know, it was just me and a small team that used to work. And uh, we'd work from sort of 9 a.m. right through to 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning. When did all this start? Uh, that probably started maybe two, three years ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was the kind of company which took up a lot of time, took up a hell of a lot of time. Um, and, and I got to the point where it just wasn't making me happy anymore. And one day I woke up and I was talking to my partner about it for a long time. And one day I woke up and I just said, I don't want to do this anymore. I said, I don't want to do this job. When, when was that? Uh, well, the agency stuff. I, I no, when did you wait? When was that moment when you woke up and didn't want to do it? Uh, it was the start of this year. It was April. Okay. It, was an, it was an April the 27th this year. How are you remember it that vividly? April the 27th this year. Because I gave it up on the 27th. And on the 28th, I was on YouTube looking at the next step because I, was, I decided I want to start going into property. Yeah. Um, I'd seen some things on YouTube that had really, really inspired me. And, um, and I thought, man, and I was seeing people achieving great things in the property world. And I was thinking to myself, if they can do it, I can do it too. I yeah. just don't know That's what exactly to do. That's exactly how I thought mm. when I started. It's like, if everybody else can do it, they're nobody special. Yeah. They started with little money. Yeah, exactly that. And it was the same for me. Like, I didn't have a huge amount of money. Um, but I decided that's what I wanted to do. And so I booked myself onto some crash courses. And I went over. We, we're <laughs> probably familiar with the crash courses. But I went over and I, and I learned a hell of a lot. Even though, you know, I hardly spent any money to attend it. Um, I learned a hell of a lot. I learned a lot about property, which I didn't realize. The different strategies you could use, the ways you could use other people's money um, into, into getting yourself started and then obviously leveraging off of that um, to then put yourself in a position which is more fortified, uh, which is, you know, much more secure and you can build off of. Um, and so I went to the crash course, uh, left really inspired. Um, and literally the next day, the reason I remember is because it was April 28th that I went. And it was the next day that I finished, I started my rent to rent. I literally, I had, I had no contracts. I had no scripts. I, had, I did not know what I was doing. But no I was knowledge. So, no knowledge. But I was so fired up after the, I thought, right, I'm going to book viewings in two day. And I'm going to go and I'm going to speak to landlords and I'm going to see if I can get one of these places. Yeah. Um, and sure enough, I turned up. The first one, honestly, it was an absolute train wreck. The first one I turned up. I didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. um, obviously, I've looked around places with landlords for myself, but I've never looked around places in the in the capacity of renting it as a company. So I didn't know the kind of questions I needed to be asking. I didn't know the kind of things the landlord would need to know about me. So I just went there, and you know, I and I and I didn't know much about property at the time either. And so basically, to give you a, in a nutshell, my first ever viewing was me turning up to this place in Cheltenham, right, which is a terrible location to start with. <laughs> and I went into Cheltenham and, uh, and I saw this one bedroom flat and the guy was really nice. Um, and I just went in there and I looked around and I asked him, I said, so is your boiler working, mate? And he was like, yeah. 
and I turned on his hot tap because I didn't know what to say, so I was just trying to <laughs> fill the gap. Yeah. So I turned on his hot tap and I like let it run for thirty seconds and it heated up and I went, Oh yeah, yeah. yeah it is working. Water, water heated up quite quick, didn't it? It's quite a good boiler you got there. And he was like, Yeah, mate. Um and then I asked him uh, you know, how about a, a few things about the place and he yeah. told me that he'd built it himself. Right. And then I went and stupidly asked him, um, oh, wow, that's cool. So how much is your mortgage on this then? And he was like, oh, I built it myself. There is no mortgage on it. Okay. And I didn't and I didn't know any of these things. And so basically I turned up and I think I was there for about 10 minutes and I made a right idiot of myself and um, asked, asked some stupid questions and then ended up leaving. And it was probably the best experience that i had because humbled you. it humbled me and it taught me that i don't there's a lot of things i don't know yeah i don't know about the contract i felt really uncomfortable with that guy there's me you know fired up full of motivation and um and when i turned up i just realized i had absolutely nothing nothing to offer and nothing to work with i didn't know what i was doing um and instead of getting put off by it i decided to myself yeah i need to start educating myself i need to start investing in myself uh to get to the point where you know i know what i'm doing and i can confidently sit in front of somebody like a landlord and i can sell my business to know them exactly what to say i know exactly what to say um and so from that it was a great experience because i'm one of those people with the mindsets of if it goes terribly the first time the only way is up you know the only way you can go is up and so it's like it doesn't get worse than that right it never gets worse than the first yeah, so my first pitch to a landlord was terrible. It was, you know, this is going to go on Airbnb and Booking.com. It doesn't get much worse than that. You shouldn't say that. Mm. And I got the deal. Fair play. Yeah. 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 So how what went on from there? So you left that viewing. You felt uncomfortable. What happened next? Well, I realised, um, I realised that, when I was driving home from the viewing, I was thinking to myself, if he says yes, and, you know, I was delusionally thinking he would say yes. And so I was like, you know, he's going to say yes. I can feel it went really well, even though it went really terribly. It was <laughs> me sort of like convincing myself that I'd done a great job. And um, and of course, he called me up and said, Ivan, you know, we're, we're not really that interested. We're going to go ahead with somebody else. And I realized if he did say yes, I wouldn't have even known what to do next. Yeah. I was like, I wouldn't know what to do next. Obviously, there's contracts. I have no idea about that. Now contracts. you know what you know. Yes. It's crazy crazy how much you need to learn isn't it yeah it is yeah it is it is there's a lot you know you've got all of the compliances um the contracts themselves you know you get no contract is the same you know every contract is different for whoever you have yeah it baffles me that people go in this blind because mm. it's such an expensive game to get wrong you it know is. properties ain't cheap no. you're signing contracts commitments mm. yeah yeah and they're expensive mistakes as well so if you make them they're going to cost you yeah mm. so fast forward a few months what happened going from there so then what happened is i'd um i started putting the contracts that I, I basically got uh got in touch with somebody who could who could get me in touch with someone who could do contracts and i paid quite a lot of money for the contracts um and i got all sorts of contracts through which funnily enough is basically all the contracts that i got when i signed up for rise up and i was okay. like why didn't i just wait or why didn't i just sign up to rise up first and then i would have had everything anyway plus the mentorship um but anyway you know i, I paid money elsewhere and um, and I got those contracts and I'd also posted an ad as well on, on a website just saying, you know, guarantee and rent to landlords, anybody who's looking for five years as a minimum, um, we can guarantee the rent, no void periods, just your standard kind of pitch, the one that you see everywhere, what everybody yeah. who's doing rent to rent is saying. And I posted, I posted that ad and, um, and I was getting quite a lot of calls about it. Um, but no one really, because I didn't know what I was doing. I can install confidence in somebody else. And so they couldn't buy into what I was doing. Right. But then I got called by this one guy called Aiden, and um, Aiden was completely desperate. He called me up. He said, "Hi, I've I've, I've seen your advert. Um, I had some tenants due to move in today, but they've just pulled out at the last minute. Um, would you like to come and view the place and take it on?" And that was my first ever place. And um, and I said to him, "Yeah, Aiden, I'd, I'd love to." And um, so we booked in for the next day, and I went down and saw the flat. It's a two bedroom flat um, in in a really busy area in Bristol. So and and funnily enough, I own a flat just down the road from it which I had previously Airbnb'd once or twice. Okay. So I knew the figures. I already knew yeah. the demographics, the demands, the figures, the occupancy, what I could charge and get away with, all of that kind of stuff. What I could get um, and so, um, and so uh, yeah, I, I was very confident. The price was great. You know, it basically equated to a 150% profit um, after you've paid all your costs and stuff. And so um, I ended up, I ended up going and viewing it. And I just, and because I'd had that terrible experience in Cheltenham, 
um, it gave me so much more strength when I went into this one with Aidan because I'm not the one going to him and, and begging him for a place. In fact, he's come to me yeah. and he needs me, which is how it needs to be with Rent to Rent. You Definitely. need to let your landlords know they need you. Yeah. You can't approach them like... We, like and you you're need to be sold on the business model. Yes, you do. That's so important. It is, man. Yeah, 100%. And... And, I, and that's what I did really well with Aiden. You know, I, I, because I'd taken a month just to really research more, understand my contracts. I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a sort of bookworm in the sense that when I get a lot of information, I'm going to really sit there and I'm going to pick through it all. And even my partner says to me, she goes, I don't get how you can sit here and go through all these contracts, but I love it. Yeah, I yeah. love the details <laughs> and I'll go through all the figures because I love it. I love the figures. And, um... You know, I find it fascinating to calculate things and work things out and just look at different clauses and twists you can make and turns. And, you know, um, I ended up uh, I ended up uh, turning up with Aidan and had a really good contract for him. And I just guaranteed him the five years and said, look, appreciate where you're coming from. I didn't mention about Airbnb and Booking.com. What I said to um, Aidan is that, you know, we represent a lot of different contractors. Um, we have student services that work through us as well, which we didn't at the time. Um, but I knew that's the direction I wanted to go, so yeah. I almost just sold it as though it was already a thing. And um, and he just bought into it. He said, Ivan, that's fantastic. And then just by some sort of stroke of good fortune, we had, um, within, within a few weeks of it going live on Airbnb, we had two nurses get in touch with us who had a sponsorship at the NHS. They're from Pakistan. They needed a place to stay. And they ended up taking the place for two years. And so since I've taken that, um, within within the first three weeks, it was on my hands and it was off my hands. I took it on. I paid Aiden. Um, and then the, the nurses paid me. And, and since then, I, I turned up last week for a property inspection. That's the only time I've turned up to the property. Um, so it's just been out of my hands and it's been paying me every single month and I'm hardly having to do anything with it. And then I've got the direct debit to Aiden. He's very happy because 7am every morning, um, when he's due to be paid, it's dropped into the account. He's not having to chase me for anything. So he's very, very happy. Um, also, I made a point of just being very, very transparent with people as well. And so I don't overpromise and underdeliver. I do it the other way. I'll always underpromise things and try and overdeliver when yeah. I can. And, um, you know, I said to Aiden, we will fix things in the, in the property for him. So, you know, nothing structural, but if anything sort of small, um, like, like paint jobs, small plumbing jobs, things like this, we can take care of it as a company, which was very attractive to him because he also wanted a hands-off investment. And since then, I've been in touch. We had a leaking shower, and I thought, you know, oh, do I want to tell him? Is he gonna? Is he gonna? Is he gonna tell me off and think I'm ruining his house and you know want to terminate the contract? Yeah. But I thought it's not my right to hold on to his property. If it's got problems with it, I need to tell him so that he can fix it and retain yeah. his value. So I told him, and actually, he really appreciated it. it was like, Ivan, I really appreciate you telling me. Thank you so much. And it actually, it's allowed us to build a very, very good relationship where he will consider selling me the flat in future. Um, oh wow! Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we've since had that conversation. Yeah, amazing. And, um, and so he was almost like, like a lease option. Almost, yeah. You could, yeah. There's room for negotiation. Yeah. So he's, um, yeah. So he's currently deciding if he wants to sell it. Um, he he has got it on his mind, and he said, if I do decide to sell it, I'll come to you, and we'll see if we can work something out. Amazing. And so yeah, which gives me a long term hold on the property, which is great. So all of this was going on before you joined me. Yes. So you'd done all that. Why did you need to join the Rise Up Mentorship? Well, um, most anybody who embarks on rent to rent, I think you realize it very early on, especially when you first start. It's a very lonely game, you know, like nobody, nobody knows what you're doing. Um, nobody understands the model. A lot of people are going to criticize it. So my own mother was like, you're being scammed. Um, you know, when yeah. I... Yeah, when I told her what I was spending, when I told her what I was, I'd spent, you know, however many thousand for these contracts, I'd spent four grand with Kenny for the Rise Up Mentorship. And she was saying, you know, have you researched these people? And are you sure you're not being ripped off? And this is, <laughs> this is a scam. It's not, and even, even when she realized it wasn't a scam, and I was telling her the business model and saying, do you realize you can pick up property? You, it's not about owning the property. It's about controlling the property. If you can control it. Yeah. You know, we've all seen the examples, Uber, Airbnb, you know, you hear about it all the time. They're masters in their fields because they're not owning things. They're controlling yeah. it all. No responsibility. No responsibility. And so, um, you know, so your liability is also very low, which is very attractive. And, 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 you know, there was a lot of people who, even friends of mine, who just thought, you know, it's not, it's not realistic though, Ive. It doesn't really work like that. And um, It's very patronising, isn't it? It can be. Yeah, it can be. But if you, but the thing is, is also, you know, you have to appreciate, 
not everyone's spending the hours that you're spending researching, you know, looking into yeah. things. I, I listened to something yesterday, actually, and mm. it was people don't like you changing because they're in love with the current you mm. and they feel like they're losing you and that's the person they love. It's so that's why they try and drag you back. Mm. And I thought that was brilliant. That's, yeah. the way to, that's the way people need to look at it. Otherwise, instantly people look at it in a negative way. True, yeah. Um, and you get let down a lot. You know, you get let down a lot. Like, I've had a lot of friends who um, I've, you know, we've arranged to go for viewings together and then I've been furnishing places and I've had, like, friends with vans who I really needed so we can pick big furniture up and they've been like, oh, if I can't make it today, sorry, mate, something's come up. I've had other friends who I've, you know, had um, just, just planned the day with so that we can get through things in the house, like, with furnishings and, and they can't come along because they can't commit to it because something else comes up. And so a lot of the time... You know, you get let down at the last minute. And I, I put this in, in the same terms as like the gym mentality. If you get used to going to the gym with a gym partner, the minute your gym partner doesn't go, mm. you don't want to go. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay, well, maybe I won't go today then if you've taken the day off. But if you're used to going by yourself, yeah. right, it doesn't matter whether that person comes or not, you're still going to go because it's, it's, it's just part of your grind. Yeah. And, um, and that's, that's the thing. It's like, even though I was getting let down and I was like, how am I going to do this now? I was like, how am I going to get these things delivered? I just made it work. You know, I went on Facebook. I called, I called people on the marketplace, got van delivery guys. Um, you know, whatever it is I needed, I just outsourced it and found it. And then, and then it didn't leave me with my hands tied. And so I could always make sure I move forward. And then now it's got to the stage where it's just kind of snowballed itself. Um, and 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 now it's not as actually people want to get involved and now i'm the one saying well i don't know if i, I, I don't know if i've got the time to like squeeze in to yeah, yeah. like show you how it's this crazy how lot busy your life gets when yeah. you start a limited company and you're growing and scaling it you can't for me i constantly just work on my business mm. I, mm. I love it i me find too. it very you know it's one of my passions um so you joined me yes. how, how has that been fantastic yeah, it's been fantastic. I mean, I'm probably one of the ones who um, doesn't engage as much as everybody else. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think I'm, I've always ran my own business ever since 22. So like I, at 22, I set up an art business and I was selling Banksy artwork in, in Bristol. Oh, wow. Okay. And that did really well. I ended up going from a £22 market store to a £1,500 a week shop in the galleries. Yeah. Um, and so, um, you know, that So was... you're quite the entrepreneur anyway entrepreneurial minded mindset yeah, yeah yeah because i love I, like you right i love this is what i love my passion with business is taking nothing yeah and building something yeah and every business that i've ever set up right um started with nothing so take the agency that i ran i started that with five pounds in my account i got made redundant from my job and I put three years into building this mentoring role, funnily enough. So I, I used to work with a company that worked with the prisons. And um, when guys were coming out of prison, they needed motivation. They needed like, they, they needed all sorts of hand-holding in, in yeah. life. And it was my job to basically stop them being dependent, give them confidence, fire them up and be like, right, get out there. Come on, you can do this, do that. And, and put, put together their plan or their map to independent living. And I love that job. And... Um, and then I got made redundant because it was funded by the European Union. We had Brexit. Yeah. Um, the funding dried up. And they, they took me in the office one morning and I came in for work and they said, you know, I've, um, you know, we've got to let you go. Unfortunately, we can't afford your role anymore. Even though you put it all together from scratch, we can't afford to pay you. And I left that meeting feeling so deflated and I decided to myself on that day, I would never ever put my, um, my future in someone else's hands again. Nice. I would be the only one who would manage it. And so that, that company, the agency came off the back of that. I started that company with five pounds in my account yeah. and it paid me 900 pounds a day in the end. Nice. Um, yeah. yeah. And even though it paid me such great wages, I dropped it because, it, because it wasn't making me happy. Um, it wasn't making me happy. And I think I'd got to the limit of where I could scale it to. Um, and so, yeah, after dropping that, joined the mentorship and, and since joining the mentorship, um, it's been amazing because you meet so many different people with so many different stories. Um, it helps you to forecast problems you may encounter because yeah, someone else is going yeah. through something yeah. that you're thinking, yeah. oh my God, I didn't, yeah, I never thought of that. That could happen to me. Yeah. And then you start finding out ways to do it. The great thing about you, Kenny, is um, you've been so responsive. So my kind of mentoring style is like, I'm very independent. I, I don't require a lot of management or micromanagement. Um, 
but I will reach out when I need it. When I need help, I'll reach out. And what I needed at the time when I joined the mentorship is I needed someone who knew what they were talking about, where I could just ping them a message and be like, hey man, this is what I'm experiencing today. This is what I'm going to do. What the hell do I do? Yeah. And I think I've come to you a few times with yeah. that message going, Kenny, yeah. this is what's going on. What do I do? You're here? just looking for that reassurance that yeah. what you do next is the right thing. Yeah, absolutely. And you've been, because you're, you're very responsive as well. And so, um, yeah, it's been fantastic. I mean, you know, I've learned loads from the group. Um, obviously, I attended one of the um, the meetings as well, yeah. like the group, the group yeah. sort of uh, things. And um, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. It was great to see the, see the team um yeah the next event is 14th of october it in is person event yeah so that's gonna be fun i've got some good guest speakers lined up for that awesome. so tell me about your deal that you secured on the mentorship how long did it take you to secure that deal it wasn't long was it um <coughs> no it wasn't long it took it took maybe um maybe a week maybe a week yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was a couple of days. I think it was about four or five days. It was very fast. Yeah, it was. I thought, oh my God. I think it was four or five days. It was insane. Yeah, so you've still got that deal now. Yeah, yeah. How was that? Because you were, I was due to come up and see you and it just kept clashing. So tell tell us about that deal. How big is it? What your plans are for it? So this is the five bed house in Bradley Stoke. Um, And... uh, you helped massively with that. Actually, I owe you a big thank you because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have taken it. I'd have walked away from it. And, and I'm sitting where I am now with the property as it is. And um, and thankfully, it's working out really well. Yeah, that's good. And so, um, so yeah, uh, it was through an agent. I'd never approached a lettings agent before. My strategy when I started, and I think it was because I was intimidated. I was intimidated by the experience and professionalism of the agents. Yeah, most people are. But yeah. they're just people doing their jobs. They are, yeah. yeah. And you realise that when you get down yeah. the line and yeah. suddenly you're the one who knows what you're, you're talking You're the about. one who knows. You're the professional. They get yeah. nervous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they get nervous yeah. with you. Yeah. And that's, that's it's such a... It's, it's crazy, such... yeah. It's a massive mindset of flip. It is, yeah. And it's nice to hold the cards. And... Um, but yeah, that's why I never called the agents. I liked, I felt safe in my comfort zone just talking to the landlords because, yeah. you know, I got my own place. Some people la- would have even been way intimidated. They'd mm. rather go to agents than direct to landlords because that is the final hurdle, isn't it? Mm, They're the ultimate decision maker. Yeah. Yeah. And to be fair, the landlord is going to interrogate you more. You know, the landlord's yeah, going to want to their more. property. It is. And they've got way more investment in it, like yeah. um, emotional. And so um, I think, and I think that's one thing I'm quite good at is I'm quite good at reassuring people. So when I do the agents, um, you know, I was finding that they're very systematic. You know, it's like you have to go through these processes yeah. and you have to tick these boxes or you're never going to get it. Whereas with the landlords, you can twist arms, yeah. you can say things, you can um, inspire it's, it's them. It's open negotiation, isn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. And so um, with with that with that five bed, um, it was through the agent. It was my first time approaching an agent, and sure enough, you know, we'd um, we'd failed the referencing yeah. because we had we hadn't had the company history, and that's where I came to you, wasn't it? And I said, Kenny, we've got this great property. I was like, you know, it looks fantastic. Um, we failed the referencing. How do we get around it? And yeah. you just said, just I've just just put your cards on the table for them, yeah. and just tell them where you're at, and just almost like you know, just just ask them outright and just say, look, well, we're an established company. We're serious with what we do. Yeah. Um. And so I took your I took your advice and I went back and this is literally what I said to the agent. I put three proposals on the table. Yeah. I said, right guys, I appreciate you failed the referencing. In that case, I suggest three proposals to put forward which can move us through this deal. I can't remember what they were now, but number one was basically just going to the landlord and explaining that we do provide a great a service that um that improves the community by you know because we provide property for care providers, we provide them for student services, we provide them for contractors who are developing the area, um and that would be option number one. Option number two is to um. Oh, what was option number two? I can't remember what the second <laughs> option was. And then the third option was basically, or just refund us the holding deposit and we'll go about how we how we can yeah. do it. Um, and they said, okay, Ivan, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to the, um, we'll speak to the landlord and we'll get back to you. Before they'd even gotten back to me, I'd already, the thing is, is I'd already started advertising the property elsewhere. And so, because I, I believe in manifestation. You've got to manifest Definitely. things. If you want it, you've got to manifest it. It's going to come. Yeah. Um, and so I'm there and I'm, I'm, I'm you thinking... You can't just like, manifest though, can you? You've got to put stuff out there like yes. affirmations, action, yes. consistency. Absolutely. The energy. It's like the energy, energy has to yeah, go what out What you there. put out, out, you get back. Yeah. Like you've already done it. 
And so it was in my head, I was like, I've already got this house. I already, in my head, I was like, I've got this house. I'm just going to advertise it, start taking viewings and things like this, as though I already had it. And sure enough, I ended up having so many viewings lined up on the property. I could go back to the agent and I said, guys, I know we've not like got any agreement from the landlord yet, but I've got three people who need, three different companies who need to come view this place today. Would you mind if I borrow one of your agents and I come in and then we can all look around together? <laughs> Amazing. And they literally yeah. said yes. They said yes. They were like, that's fine enough because they were desperate to get rid of it too because it's a managed well, property. Yeah. They're going to get the commission. Mm. They're going to get the commission for managing it. Um, and and that's what was really great. We took the companies into the house. Um, the agents could meet the companies and they're all very professional. Um, hu I mean, one of them was Clear Springs, for example, which is a huge company with a home office contract at the minute for care work, providing care and asylum seeker, uh, accommodation for asylum seekers. And so it's one of those great causes as well. Um, and um, and so, yeah, we went with Clear Springs and we had a couple of other companies come, um, huge names. And, and, and then the agent was impressed. They were impressed because I'd put more viewings on that property in one day than they'd put in it in a week. Yeah, nice. And um, and then and then in the end, they, they fed that back to the landlord. The landlord said, yeah, OK, let's go ahead with them. Um, and then everything got everything got tied up. And then the property was like it was like a weight around my neck for about three weeks because it was unfurnished um it was you yeah know, talk us through that what what did you do across these three weeks how was it now yeah so um so it, it, we got it completely empty there was nothing in there at all Not big even, five bed sorry big five, big bed. five bed yeah Big five bed. And I'd never furnished a five bed before, so it's my yeah. first ever one. The biggest I'd gone is a two bedroom flat. <laughs> which <laughs> a bit is, of a difference. Yeah, massively. Because it's like it's like two beds. You know, you get your two beds, you get a sofa, sofa yeah. set in there. It's really simple. Whereas this, you know, you with a house as well, I find with flats you can get away with not overdoing the furnishing. You know, like carpets and things. You can get away with it a little bit because it's smaller. But with a big house, because there's so much spare space, you need you need to fill it. You need like house plants. You need um, you need uh, rugs. You need artwork yeah. on the walls. You yeah. need or just interesting pieces. And um, yeah, it takes a lot of thought. It takes a lot of design. It takes a lot of manpower. You know, you need more than one of you. Yeah. And um, and yeah, you know, the three weeks. What we did is we just spent it furnishing the place. Um, going to charity shops, so I always do my shopping in the charity shops because I like to give back to the community at every step I can. Yeah. So for me, um, you know, going into the charity shops, British Heart Foundation is my number one. Um, I've got a great deal. I've got a great arrangement with one of the staff in there where they give me fifty percent off everything. Amazing. And so I come in there, I buy a like every, I literally clear their store out, and when the <laughs> delivery guy come yeah. in. Uh, to drop the drop all the furniture, like the double beds, the king size beds, the sofas, all of the stuff I bought. I said, "How's the shop looking this morning?" He was like, "Mate, there's nothing in the shop. <laughs> You've taken everything." And um, and I got I got about one thousand eight hundred pounds worth of stuff for seven hundred quid. Um, and so um, so was, so I got a really good deal there. Um, and I just spent three weeks furnishing it, taking viewings. What I can say is, probably the most stressful part for me was running the viewings. Um, because I've never done viewers before. Because obviously, I'd done it all as a serviced accommodation before. Yeah. But what I realised was that I can charge my same serviced accommodation profits, but in a tenancy agreement sort of way. So I don't ever have to be running in, messing around with cleaners, cleaning myself. Um, you know, I, I don't have to mess around with that stuff. I can stick somebody in it and be hands off. Yeah. And that's the approach I decided to take. So where I started off, especially with the mentorship, I was doing serviced accommodation. Now what I'm actually doing is I found ways to achieve the same profit margins um, through companies or through international students yeah. um, who are fantastic for that kind of thing. And um, and that's, that's basically what I've turned it into now. So I spent basically three weeks from the minute it was furnished uh, unfurnished we were already taking viewings showing people around an empty house this is where you're going to live yeah and then and then over the weeks you know it was just filling up we had beds now and then it yeah. became more and more attractive and um we we're closing a deal this week so um i've just done the right to rent checks on four um indian students okay. who have come to view the property um, and there was a lot of, comp I've had about seven people all competing for it. I've had to let down so many people yeah. and it's a horrible feeling. It is a horrible Especially feeling. when it's the last minute and they've been yeah. really holding out for you. Yeah. They're like, Ivan, we've not got anything else in the pipeline. It's just you we're going with. And it's great in terms of like, you know, people can have that confidence in you and faith in you, but it's a big, it's a big weight to carry. 
Um, and uh, but thankfully this week with with we're signing a deal and it's going to bring in seven thousand pound into the company. Um, because they're going to pay three and a half thousand for their deposit, they're going to pay three and a half thousand for their first month's rent, um, and it makes a nice tidy profit on top of it. And so, what is your um, profit on that? So the profit is just one thousand a month, straight. Yeah, one thousand a month. Just one thousand. Yeah, just one thousand. <laughs> but this month, actually, we got quite lucky because about last week we had uh, so we've got we've got a company in there at the minute and we had that same company in there last week and they paid 700 pound for last week they paid 700 pound for this week monday to friday i think I, sh I sent you a screenshot um and they've booked it so two weeks in a row this is their last week so they've paid 1400 pound this month but then these students when this company moves out on friday those students are moving in friday yeah and they're going to take it for a year so that's 12 months tenancy agreement tenancy agreement yeah, yeah. so um, they're taking that one for a year. So actually the property this month has made um, 2,400 profit. Nice. Because it's made that's the, the average 1400... UK wage for yeah. a month. Yeah, and that's just the one property. And so um, when I started your mentorship, Rise Up, um, I cleared out my whole account for, yeah. the, for, the, for the support. Because for me, I... How did that make you feel then? Fantastic. 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 Was it daunting, scary, nervous? Oh, no. I had so you, much confidence uh, in you. You'd followed me enough. Yeah. I'd followed you enough. Brainer. And I'd gone through some of the people that you'd mentor as well. And I looked okay. on their pages and saw, like, Caroline, for example, yeah. one of them. Um, and uh, and I'd seen, like, some of the success she'd been doing. And I, you know, I, I was... I'd done you can my... just see they're genuine people. Yes. Genuine people. Yes. And that's sort of what I really loved about the actual Rise Up membership, was the fact that... Um, you yourself as a mentor are very real. You're not selling pipe dreams to people. Yeah. And, you know, you come across so many mentors. I actually think in my content I deliver so much bad stuff about rent to rent because I think it's really important. People need to know the downsides of this business. And I think that's more in my content than the good sides. I think it's powerful, though, man, because, you know, some people can get... Can get um, some people can believe in things that aren't achievable. Yeah. And Definitely. um, and I think you and they're need, out there. They are, yeah. And you need to you need to almost hear the bad stuff because you're already weeding out the crap. Yeah. If you've if you're selling it all, like you make loads of money, you're gonna have loads of profit. Well, then everyone's gonna apply. And then the minute they start having challenges, hurdles, yeah, exactly, they're dropping out, and it becomes your heading. Yeah. But so I you... set the expectations before even people message me to yeah. join. Yeah. And then all you're getting is the people who can handle it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And There's that's a brilliant, what's... powerful community of all similar mindset people that expect it's going to be hard and are in it for the long game mm. and are serious, which is nice. Yeah. That, there's not too many people with similar mindsets. It's you know, it's few and far between. So create a community full of similar mindsets. It's going to be really powerful. It is, yeah, man. And that, and that's basically what you've done. And um, and it, and you feel it when you enter, when you enter into the chats, and you can see the conversation yeah. and just the line of conversation. It's all high frequency stuff. It's all high frequency conversations, solution, talking solutions. We're not talking problems. You know, we're always talking. How do we get around that? How do we fix that? What's the direction or the process to deal with that? And um, and 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 you're never left without an answer, which no. is one thing I love. But yeah, how did I feel clearing out my account to pay you for the mentorship? It felt fantastic. Because I knew I was stepping into the next phase. I knew yeah. that I'd gone up a level. And um, and for me, I'm one of those big... So I, I'm a big investor. I love investing in cryptocurrencies. I don't do the stock market. Okay, so yeah. Um, That's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. and so I I know money has to be working all times. So I don't like leaving it. So if I see £5,000 in my account, it annoys me. I want that out there yeah, working. Yeah, always go back to zero. Yes, and compound. And then in the background, it's always building. And for me, investing in uh, your mentorship was like any other investment where I was like, you know, I can see the value in it. I can see what I'm going to get back at the end of it. Um, the, there's, the price doesn't matter. And I wanted to send, and I think I showed you the screenshot and I was like, you know, can, Kenny, can we work out a, 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 a sort of payment plan for the rest <laughs> of it? Because I paid half. I got nothing left. And, um, but I, I knew my income, like what was coming into the company account. So I knew it was feasible. Um, uh but yeah, I felt great because I'd finally gotten the help that I knew I needed. Yeah. And, um, and it's not ended. And it's, it's not, not ended. ended. No, yeah. it's ongoing. It doesn't end. And also, it's like, it's not just you, Kenny. It's like, you get access to so many great people in the mentorship. Yeah. You know, there are so many great people. And they'll message you in private yeah. and be like, hi, welcome to the group. Yeah. What's your story? Um, and then you find out about other people's stories and you find ways you can sort of like um, connect and help each other. 
And so, um, yeah, really, really valuable. In fact, I think, I think personally, you're not charging enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I... I mean. try and relate to the person I used to be. Hmm. And, you know, the person that is wanting to start doesn't have a lot of money. So I'm still trying to help the person I used to be. And if I go up in price, mm. then I don't help the previous me, which is a little bit sad. So I do try, I'm going to try and keep it at this price. Fair, yeah, fair but play to you. That's, yeah. It's not a commitment. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it there. So what's your plans going forward? What's your goals? Um, well, my goal so far is just to build up as much rent to rent as I can, um, as many properties as I can get. Um, and really this year for me is about building the foundation. So I kind of do, um, when I'm building business, I do it like a year by year sort of plan. And so this year, the first year is all about building the foundations and securing the network. And so it's like putting the right people around you, getting as much property as possible, um, and just providing as much value as possible, you know, um, to, to other companies. One thing I really want to do is work with other companies just so that when I take properties on, it's literally a case of take the property, call the company, got another one. Do you want it? Yes, mate. We Build want relationships. It. Boom. Yeah, yes. And it's off. And then you're just literally taking that. You could even line up the company before you even secure the property. Yeah. I've got yeah. this one. Would you want it? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm actually, I'm doing that at the minute. Um, yeah. so I've got one company who keeps coming back to me and, um, and because they love to break close, uh, they know they've seen pictures of the other two places that I've got in Bristol as well, and um, and they keep coming back. Have you got anything else, Ive? Have you got anything else? And um, yeah, you know, whenever whenever I have um, viewings or anything like that, I can send the pictures across and just be like, okay, here's the pictures. Here's a here's a video tour of the property. Do you like it? And if they like it, then generally they're they're getting in for their viewings, and it gives me a good sort of um, position to leverage myself off of with the uh, with the landlord or with the agent that I'm speaking with. Because I'm like, I've already got, the pro the property's already gone. You just need to sign the contract to me and I can get it gone for two years. Yeah. And um, So that's your goal for the next year or two. What, what's the long game? The long game would be to, I, I, I want to start basically doing doing like covering all sorts of different areas and property so i want to start going into lease option agreements i'd love to own more property as well um i want to take it abroad i want okay. to take rent to rent abroad because yeah. i don't think if you go to somewhere like portugal um if you go to somewhere like um like even some parts in spain or just de definitely mainland europe it's not a huge model like nobody knows really about rent to rent and there's like you know a couple of big mentors who mentor in rent to rent who just got broken over into spain because they can see that it's empty it's an empty market with no competition and they're snapping up everything and i i got my um european citizenship uh at the end of last year and um and i was just thinking i want to be in portugal doing okay. this. yeah and, it'd be and, interesting to see you progress to that yeah and that then have a bridge where yeah. almost you're providing people who want to go from england to portugal here's all the properties people who want to go from portugal to england yeah. here's all the properties and and that's kind of my plan um to facilitate student travel because you know it's it's great to support people's futures um i i personally like students because they're just cool like they're not going to nitpick everything whereas older people really they like oh, their home comforts. <laughs> yeah. yeah they like their home comforts i had an airbnb where someone complained because i didn't have a coffee machine and i said to him but in my description do i it say I have yeah a coffee? Exactly. it doesn't say it yeah, they, but people, he had to moan about it. And people then, love to moan that's the guy that left me the one star. Yeah. So when I said it in the Rise app and I said I got a one star review from the guy who just left a dot, left a full stop as the review. That was it. No no, no advice for anyone else because he couldn't say anything bad. But he didn't like the fact that I didn't have a coffee machine and he didn't like the fact that I wouldn't take it over for him. Um, not that he asked, but just that I probably didn't offer. Yeah. Because why should I? Um, you know, we didn't like it. But you've got freeze-dried coffee there, mate. Have a Kenko. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, so tell me about the amount of effort you put into your business per day, per week. Well, it's... Or it, time managed. Well, it's, it's, it's non-stop. You know, anyone who's doing rent to rent or anyone who's serious about doing it, like, you know, on a, on a large scale, it's relentless, man. Um, it doesn't stop. You know, it doesn't stop. It's like from the minute... So from the minute I wake up, yeah. um, I will be, be headhunting property. 
I'll be picking up the phone. I'll be making calls to, to agents. Ah, uh, so not just managing. This is headhunting properties as well. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's generally how I work in quite a compartmentalised way in my head. So I like section things off throughout the day. And so the mornings for me is always just reaching out to agents, having having a chat with people. Also, usually now my Facebook inbox or my WhatsApp messenger is just full of messages from people. You will no doubt have the same problem, right? Where I just, you just can't get through it all. Yeah. And people need things that you've had on in the pipeline and um and so you know it's organizing that stuff a lot of it's coordination which is where thankfully the agency experience i have comes into play because i can coordinate things very well with agents people and then match it all up um next part of the day normally is so with take break close for example i'm building the property up you know i'll be over there all day um doing the little odd jobs whether it's like fixing in the the plumbing stuff like the washing machines we had to do some work on the toilets as well um and then obviously there's all the furnishing stuff as well just had a baby so that yeah now, that now that's a spanner in. into the works yeah it really does and i really underestimated how much time that would take <laughs> um and also I, i'm a bit unfortunate in the sense that she's got the same body clock as me and so me i'm a night owl and yeah. i go all the way th- all the way through the night usually i'll go to sleep about 3 4 a.m um then i'm up at like half eight nine most of the okay. time as well and then i'll go again um and that's exactly what she's done to me now. Um, so she, she'll keep me up till 4 a.m. I was yeah. getting into a really great pattern of going to bed at um, really early 10 a.m., getting up at 5. Yeah. Um, and that's how I was starting my days before. But since having my daughter, now it's like I'm awake all night. That's out the window. How old now. is your daughter? She's only like three and a half weeks Okay. Now. Yeah. yeah, Jasper didn't sleep. He was awake every hour and a half for nine months. Mm, wow. Yeah. yeah. He, still, he's two. Doesn't mm. go through the night. Yeah, that's yeah. basically what we've got as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hard, man. It is hard. It's hard. Um, it's real, though, you know? You're building a business, you're, you're a family man. Mm. Um, it's very possible. Yeah. So the person you are now, compared to the person you were before even looking in the property, what? how have you developed and how has your mindset changed? Well, um, I would say I'm much more, like... Without sounding like, not to sound like in a big headed way, but I'm much more unstoppable now than I was before. Yeah. So before it's like a little something would come up and I'd be like, oh, you know, I'm not too sure. Like, how would I navigate that? And, um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know which necessarily which direction to take. So then I would just not bother with it at all. If I couldn't see the path, I wouldn't go with it. Um, but definitely since, and that's where I owe a lot to the Rise Up Mentorship, because since starting the mentorship, it's also, it gives you that, you, you feel like you've got an army behind you. And so while you're at the helm, doing all the conversations, doing the negotiations, behind you is an army. Yeah, I love and, that. And, um, you know, and like, so you know, it's like, if stuff does go wrong, I've got so many different opinions and so much experience behind me, which isn't necessarily my own experience, yeah. but the experience of others, which can navigate me through this stuff. And it makes you feel much more unstoppable because then, you know, as you're as you're moving through things you don't worry too much about the challenges or the uncertainties because you think i'll just cross that bridge when i get to yeah. it i'll pop kenny a message <laughs> and he'll just tell me what i need to do next yeah. and then you just do it a lot of the rise up a lot of the rent to rent stuff is just action you know you you can do a lot of talking you can do a lot of planning but i heard a great phrase years and years and years ago which is paralysis through too much analysis right yeah. which is where you spend so long looking at the data looking at the working out procrastinating how am i going to make it work um you know and you're looking at all these figures and stuff and people actually, come up with excuses why they don't do it yeah you know, oh, that's why i've not started mm. yeah yeah and you just got to take action i think like i'm a big believer that you know Again, like what we were saying just now about manifestation, it's like you have to put the energy out there. If your energy slumped in a couch at home on your laptop just looking at things, you're not you're not creating enough for the universe to give it to you. Um, but if you're out there and you're literally every day you're up and you're putting the work out there and you're yeah. having the come, it's it's coming. Yeah, it will come, hundred yeah. percent. No, honestly, Livo, it's been fun chatting with you. I'm really mm. excited to see your future. I think you've got an amazing mindset and the way you deal with problems you instantly find the solution and you work with it. I think you're you're really going to go places and I'm excited to be right behind you, watching every step. So thanks for coming, bro. Really appreciate it. It's a pleasure, man. Thanks for having me.